When most people think of the word smart, they think of people like Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking, and maybe even good old Oppie. These three guys study science, a topic that's seen as being extremely difficult to understand, which in turn gives them the title of being smart. But what does being smart actually mean? I bet I can guess what you're thinking right now. It means having a high IQ, bro. Huh? Huh? See? I'm pretty smart, right? Wrong. Just like how that prediction was probably off, a person's intelligence can't be fully measured with something as simple as an IQ test. The reason for this is because there are actually nine different types of intelligence, but I'll get to those right after I fry up these IQ tests. A standard IQ test consists of 25 to 50 multiple choice questions and can take anywhere from one to two hours depending on the person. The contents of these questions is what matters though. These tests mostly focus on things like mathematical skills, memory, spatial perception, and language ability. This is why most big name scientists have a high IQ. Math and science go hand in hand, so if your math skills aren't up to par, you won't make it very far in the world of science. That's all besides the point though. What's really important here is that 25 to 50 multiple choice questions couldn't possibly cover everything that's needed to determine how smart someone is. IQ tests only scratch the surface of intelligence and are used more as a general evaluation more than anything else. This is where those nine different types of intelligence come into play. Even though some of them are measured on the test, a lot of the other ones are left out. This is a problem because not everyone is smart in the same regard. Let me explain what I mean by that. Here we have John and Joe. John over here is extremely good at math, but can't do creative writing to save his life. Joe, on the other hand, is the exact opposite of John. He's incredible at creative writing, but sucks at math. If these two were to take the same IQ test, John would end up with a higher score than Joe. Unfortunately for Joe, John would never let him live it down, and he'd be getting clowned for the rest of his life. But because of how IQ tests are set up, John isn't necessarily smarter than Joe. He's just better at the topics that are covered in your average IQ test. Okay, I'm done yapping. It's time for the nine types of intelligence. There's logical slash mathematical intelligence, linguistic intelligence, interpersonal intelligence, intrapersonal intelligence, musical intelligence, visual slash spatial intelligence, bodily slash kinesthetic intelligence, naturalistic intelligence, and existential intelligence. If we want to figure out what being smart actually means, first we'll need to break down all nine of these forms of intelligence. Some of them you can figure out just from the name, but others are a little more complex. If you thought I was yapping before, brace yourself because there's a lot to cover here. Let's start with number one. Logical slash mathematical intelligence is pretty self-explanatory, but for the sake of the video, I'll go ahead and explain. This type of intelligence deals with a person's ability to learn and solve math equations, as well as pointing out trends and understanding relationships. If you enjoy things like puzzles, strategy games, or solving mysteries, you may fall under this category. Moving on to number two, we have linguistic intelligence. Contrary to the name, this version of intelligence doesn't include how easily a person can learn a different language. It actually refers to how effectively a person uses words in whatever their main language is. So if you're a person who knows how to use the right words in the right situation, odds are you're linguistically intelligent. Next up on the list is interpersonal intelligence, or to make it a little easier, emotional intelligence. This version is usually found in people that are particularly good at identifying people's emotions and predicting how that person will act based on how they feel. To put it in layman's terms, it basically just means the ability to read people. Number four is the exact opposite though. Instead of understanding other people's emotions, intrapersonal intelligence refers to a person's ability to understand themselves. People who fall under this category are usually very good at identifying what they're feeling and why they're feeling that way. Number five is musical intelligence, another easy one. Basically, if you have good rhythm, understand pitch, and are highly attentive when it comes to music, you're probably musically intelligent. Number six is visual slash spatial intelligence. This type of intelligence is reserved more for visual artists. In official terms, if you're capable of visualizing the world in all three dimensions, you probably have artistic ability in some capacity. Whether it be drawing, painting, architecture, or any other visual art form, they all fall under visual slash spatial intelligence. The seventh version is called bodily slash kinesthetic intelligence and is very common in athletes. This version refers to a person's ability to identify their physical ability and use that physical ability to the fullest extent. People who fall under this category are very in touch with their body physically and can very easily coordinate their mind and body together as one. It also includes things like body language, working with your hands, and hand-eye coordination. The number eight spot belongs to naturalistic intelligence and is another one that's pretty simple. It deals with people who have a deep understanding of nature. People who fall under this category usually love being outside, connect easily with animals, and are very good at raising animals as well. 
The ninth and final version of intelligence is existential intelligence. This version refers to a person's ability to handle deep questions, like what is the meaning of life and what happens after death. Not only that, but people who are existentially intelligent actually try to figure out the answers to questions like these. When most people think of questions like this, they either have a panic attack or decide that the question isn't possible to answer. But if you're someone who thinks very deeply about stuff like this, you're most likely existentially intelligent. Okay, so now we've covered the nine versions of intelligence. Now that we have all of this information, information, it'll be a lot easier to understand the science behind being smart, right? Well, no. I kind of baited you guys a little bit. In reality, everybody exhibits all nine forms of intelligence in some way, shape, or form. The difference is that of the nine, people have a primary or a more dominant form of intelligence. Think of it like this. You have two hands. You use one of those hands more often than the other one. That hand is referred to as your dominant hand. It's the same thing with intelligence, except instead of there being two options, there are nine. Now, unless you've delved into every intelligence type at some point in your life, it might be a little difficult to find out which version is your primary one. But that's okay, because this isn't all that's used to figure out how smart someone is. These categories are mainly used to figure out which type of smart someone is, not how smart they are. So what can we look at to know how smart someone is? Well, it's a bit of a boring answer, but most of it is actually genetics. A study done by Robert Plowman, David Folker, Robin Corley, and John DeFries was conducted to see if children really do inherit intelligence from their parents. What they did was they ran IQ tests on children who were adopted at birth as well as their adopted parents and their biological parents. The study found that even though these children had never met their biological parents, there was a strong correlation between their intelligence. They also found that as the children got older, the correlation to their biological parents became stronger, so there really wasn't any denying it. Despite this, after decades of of research, scientists have only found one gene that makes people smarter. This is a huge accomplishment though, as figuring out something like this requires an insane amount of neuroscience knowledge. The gene was found in a study ran by Paul Thompson at the University of California. Along with the help of 207 researchers, they were able to find a gene that contributed 1.29 points to an IQ test, which is insanely small, but it's something. How they were able to figure out something like this is way beyond me, but nonetheless, they did it, and they were able to show the world that intelligence is actually genetic. Remember though, these results are based on scores from an IQ test, so this gene only contributes to mathematical skills, memory, spatial perception, and language ability. Okay, so we've covered the IQ tests, the nine different types of intelligence, and genetics. What else is left? Well, to be honest, there isn't much. Figuring out how smart someone is is still extremely difficult with the knowledge and resources we have today. We can run as many studies as we want, but the reality is that there will always be outliers. There are some people in the world who don't have exceptionally smart parents, have never taken an IQ test, and don't know which intelligence type is dominant in them. And yet they'll be so smart that they boggle people's minds. So until we have a way to measure someone's intelligence with every factor taken into account, we won't know what actually makes people smart. The fact is, intelligence isn't linear, making it extremely hard to study. People are good at all sorts of things, whether it be math, science, writing, or anything else. But the idea here is that everyone is intelligent in some way. Unless you've been in one of those Gen Z doesn't know anything interviews and couldn't answer a single question. Hate to break it to you, bro, but if that's you, you are beyond cooked. A good score on an IQ test is not saving you. In reality, though, I'm just a guy who likes science. So if you thought this video was swagtastic, be sure to drop a like and subscribe.